Hey kitchen people, my name is Alyssa. I'm the owner and creator of the Floral Apron blog. Today I'm here to show you how to make garlic French bread. This loaf is still hot from the oven. It smells absolutely incredible and I cannot wait for you to make it at home. So let's get started. This is a great beginner bread recipe with easy cleanup. You can find the full recipe on my blog at floralapron.com. I have one tablespoon of yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, and about two cups of warm water. That's about 110. We'll let that sit for about five minutes to let the yeast start working. And while my yeast is bubbling, I like to measure out my flour so that I have it ready to go. Now my yeast is pretty bubbly, so we know it's active. I'm gonna set it damp mixer here, add the dough hook attachment, and add in three cups of flour, my olive oil, and my salt. Let's sprinkle that on top. And then we'll stir it on low. We'll slowly increase the speed until most of the flour is incorporated. And then we're gonna add one more cup of flour at a time, stirring until incorporated. Okay, now that that's incorporated, I'll add in another cup. Then once it starts sounding like it's struggling, I get a dough scraper. Break down the sides. And I keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't rip. It's fine. Keep an eye on the consistency because you may not need to use all the flour. Okay, I'm gonna add some. Scrape this guy down. Got what I have left on my dough hook off. Oh. That's why we start on low. Once the dough is fully mixed, it will start circling around the dough hook. Let it knead for about two to three minutes until it looks stretchy. I got a little impatient, so I turn it up higher. <laughs> okay. Now I have a bit more stretch. It's not really sticking to my fingers, like a fairly dry dough. I'll give it another 30 seconds or so. So my dough looks nice and stretchy. It's not sticking to my fingers when I touch it, so my hands are clean. I'm gonna scrape it off of the dough hook and just put it back in the bowl. And here is our little ball of dough. Well, here is our big ball of dough. So I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out. We're going to proof this at room temp for about an hour until it's doubled in size. Now our dough is quite puffy. I'm going to take the plastic wrap off and then punch it down to use the remnants of what I have in this little container to grease my work surface. Spread that into a really thin layer. Great moisturizer. I divide my dough in half. And you can weigh this. There's not a need to be quite as precise in this stuff. Be about half to me. So this guy goes back in the bowl. This is the best part. So we're gonna shape this into a nice rectangle. And you can see that mine is looking more like a square. That's fine. I aim for about 9 by 13. This looks more like a 12 by 12. But you know, we're gonna call it good. 
This is two tablespoons of garlic powder. I'm gonna use half of it because we're gonna two doughs here. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the top here. And then we're going to gently roll up the edges, pushing out any air bubbles that you feel. If it sticks a little bit, it's fine. And then you have one really nice oh take my prepared baking cleaner just a sheet of parchment paper no oil or anything and i'm going to make sure that the seam side is down just pick it up and transfer and you can see that one of these edges looks a little bit bigger so i'm gonna just pull it very gently to even it out a little bit and then I'm going to pinch my ends together and then tuck them under and pinch them to the bottom there. And again, it looks like it's getting a little bit big, so I'm going to just gently pull it out. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And there you have one loaf. Time for the other. Yeah, I can still salvage another couple of your dough into it. See if I can get this one in more of a rectangle. You don't want it too long because it will puff up and it'll get to be a little bit longer than this. So this is about as wide as I want it to go. So I'll sprinkle the rest of my garlic powder on top. And starting on the edge farthest away from you, start to gently roll up. It won't stick immediately with the garlic powder, but as you keep going, it'll it'll learn. <laughs> so I know my seam is right here. I think my baking pan. Yours is a little bit long. It's going to stretch out when you transfer it to the baking sheet. So I kind of smash it together a little bit. And then I find that just helps to be the perfect consistency. Pinch your ends together and then fold under. Kind of feel it when it when it feels. Pinch your ends together, fold under. And this side looks a little bit big, so I'm just gonna move it like a caterpillar. And we have two French bread loaf shaped. I use a very sharp knife, my wusta. And I'm just gonna do a couple slices, diagonal angle couple inches apart and just gives it a nice neat look. I go either direction with the knife and then we get to a point where I could do another one or I could not. I usually do an extra just because I can't make sure they're all about the same depth. I'm only cutting into maybe the first layer so I'm not seeing any garlic. I've noticed that I did not seal this quite properly so I'm gonna touch that up now. Okay, so now we're gonna proof for about an hour until they're noticeably puffy and look like bread just uncooked. <laughs> to prevent your bread from drying out during this stage, cover lightly with plastic wrap or a damp kitchen towel. I like to use plastic wrap after I've added just a little bit of oil to it because I have absolutely no issues of it sticking, but you are welcome to do whatever you prefer. I used far too short of these plastic wraps, so we're gonna double this. Just wanna set it on top, you don't wanna tightly wrap it because it will expand. Honestly, these are never empty. Just very lightly greased. I have maybe two drops in my hand that I'm just lightly brushing on. Okay. And we will check on them in about an hour. Our bread looks pretty poofy, so I'm gonna pull off the plastic wrap and you can tell exactly where you greased and where you did not because it's sticking just a tiny bit there. Very good, very good. At about the halfway point of the proving, 
I would say turn on your oven so that it can get up to temp. If you know that your oven will take half an hour, an hour, then preheat as soon as you know that you'll need to. Oh, they look so good, don't they look great? Okay, my oven is now preheated to 375. I'm gonna throw this guy in the oven for about 25 minutes until he's light golden brown. I'm gonna throw in a couple of ice cubes on the bottom. I find that that helps with steam. Always check your oven manual to make sure that that's okay for your oven. I'm sure that it's fine for mine, so I do that. So, here we go. I have very tiny ice cubes, so I put in quite a few. Three or four for normal sized. Can you hear it, Stevie? <laughs> I typically use the middle or the upper middle rack. Today I used the upper middle rack to change things up a bit. So, we'll see. While my bread is baking, I like to do up the dishes. That way once the bread is cooked, I have nothing left to do. I really don't have a whole lot. So I'm gonna do those up pretty quick and then my first loaf should be right about done. That is one of the most beautiful loaves I've ever made. Wow. Now I'm gonna pop this guy in for another 25 minutes. Add a few more ice cubes because all the steam that you had in there is now gone from opening up the door. I know it's so hard to wait. This smells so good, but let it cool until it's just barely warm, and then we'll slice in and... Oh man, if you could smell this. <laughs> but this has been cooling for about 15 minutes and it's still warm to the touch, but I can't stop myself, so I'm so excited. It smells so good. It looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh man. You can see the swirl of garlic powder in there. There are few things in life better than warm bread with butter on it. I like an even spread. There's a little bit of a break where that garlic meets, so it you can just pull it out when you're eating it and it, oh man, this is so good. Mm. You can find the full recipe for the garlic French bread at floralapron.com. Thanks for watching and blossoming with me. I'm gonna eat this now. <laughs>